Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first review of a wrestling pay-per-view on the channel. <laughs> um, I recently wanted to kind of do a weekly kind of podcast for the channel, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of good jumping off point to do a review of a pay-per-view. So recently I watched Full Gear, uh, AEW Full Gear on Bleacher Report, and uh, what I'm going to do is just briefly go through each of the matches, uh, which ones I thought were the match of the night, and then I'm going to give it either one out of five karate chops for how good they were, um, and I I will say this pay-per-view was good, uh, just not to the all-out level, uh, but I, I was really entertained, and there was just a lot of wrestling. I mean, there was so much wrestling on this pay-per-view. So starting off the pay-per-view, it was the first match. It was Darby versus MJF. Uh, Darby had a really cool intro where it kind of mimicked uh, his uh, uncle's uh, drunk driving. And uh, so it kind of yeah. adds to the story. Uh, it, it was a little bit of a slow start of the match. Obviously, uh, you know, Darby being a smaller wrestler, it, it kind of had to be. Um, because MJF is just that much bigger, but uh, I always like seeing the David versus Goliath type matches, and uh, you know I think Jim Cornette would appreciate that this was actually a uh, heel versus face, uh, not like recently on uh, on AEW TV where it's been like face versus face and heel versus heel. Um, there was a, a lot of uh, solid back and forth. Uh, Darby took a really nasty bump uh, outside on the. Uh, on the apron and uh, anytime I see a bad bump and I will I will call them out there was a lot of uh, bumps that you know not necessarily were bad but just having back issues you can feel it uh, so uh, Darby was working uh, MJF's knee a lot uh, the coffin drop from the outside of the top rope uh, that was great uh, obviously, if MJF was going to win, it was going to be a dirty finish. Uh, he he distracted the ref enough so that he could take out... Um, I, I didn't really see what it was, but he, he knocked uh, Darby out cold and uh, then finished him off. Uh, I would give this match uh, two karate chops. I, I'm a huge Darby Allen fan, but I was kind of let down with this match. But obviously... It's the first match of the night. It got things going. Uh, AEW is kind of unpredictable. Sometimes they put like the best matches at the beginning of the pay-per-view. So I, I was kind of like, oh, you know, this is a good way to start. Uh, the second match of the night, and probably one of my favorites, is the F is FTR versus the Lucha Bros. There was a ton of slaps and chops starting off the match. Uh, I was a little bit worried because the Lucha style... Versus, you know, FDR style is kind of, uh, you know, red and blue. They clash. Um, but I was surprised. And it could just be with FTRs. Uh, normally wrestle in AAA. So I think they, they kind of got the Lucha style down so they could work with it. So I think that's why it worked really well. Um, there's a lot of great tag team uh, works. Um, I, I like it when... There's storytelling, but there's also a lot of working on certain parts of the area. It just reminds me of the era of wrestling that I grew up watching. Um, obviously, I grew up during the Attitude Era, but I was a big fan of wrestling prior to the Attitude Era. So I liked the bad WCW era uh, where everybody was kind of vanilla, but I'm just a fan of wrestling. Not so much a fan of sports entertainment, so AEW kind of... Uh, satisfies that itch for me. Uh, another spot that I really liked was when uh, I think it was Harwood tied uh, uh, Penta's mask to the rope. Uh, you know, th those kind of things where they use the wrestler's tools against them, uh, I always think works really well. Uh, there was uh, some interference, but not too much. Uh, I really enjoyed when uh, they kind of made fun of Eddie Guerrero because uh, it, it really adds to the heel aspect of FTR there. Uh, but then the Lucha Bros got it back. Um, 
I, I, I will say this match was just so much fun to watch, and it, and it really got me excited for the rest of the pay-per-view. I gave it four karate chops, probably one of the best of the night, uh, just because it was just pure wrestling. Uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, like a gimmick match um, or a huge uh, marathon, like uh, Super Smash Brothers style wrestling match, like what we'll have later on. Match number three. Uh, oh, and by the way, it was the Lucha Bros retaining the championship. Uh, match number three was Miro versus Danielson. I, I was really, I, I was excited that this match was happening, but maybe it's just the cynic in me, but I feel like when pay-per-views have way too much wrestling, it kind of takes away from some of the other matches. So this match felt like you could have taken it or leaving it. But the fact that the winner got the number one contendership for the uh, AEW title, um, I felt like it, it had its rightful place. Um, it was a lot of exciting back and forth at the beginning. Um, then it started slowly building up. Um, Miro just had just raw power. Uh, he seemed kind of distracted, so, so I, I don't know about that. Uh, one of my gripes is, uh, especially in modern day wrestling, there's just so much going outside of the ring. Um, just not a big fan of that. And uh, it kind of takes away the power from the referee. Um, but one plus about this match was uh, Ref Aubrey is like one of my favorite referees in any wrestling organization. Uh, she's just got so much character, life. It's almost like a third. You feel like there's a third person in the ring where other refs just feel like a background, background noise. It was a really tech technical match, tactical, good back and forth. Um, there was a sloppy camel clutch, but there was a good pop for it. So I, I think it kind of uh, negated the fact that it was kind of sloppy. Um, the arm bar fight against the triangle hold was good. Um, some nasty elbow strikes. Um, I would have given this four karate chops, but I took away half of a karate chop. So maybe like a half power karate chop. Uh, just for the fact that it, it had kind of a weird finish. Um, I, I know they probably were running low on time because of all the matches on this card. Uh, Danielson won, so he is now the number one contender for the AEW championship. So three and a half karate chops for this match. Match number four was Super Click versus uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Um, I will say... Going into this match, I was not looking forward to it. Um, I love the Super Click, and uh, I'm I'm just not a fan of like when there's too much comedy. Comedy does have a place in wrestling. Just look at Danhausen; he's hilarious, but he can wrestle. Um, I was worried that this was going to be too too much of a comedy match, but uh, ended up being a really good match. My problem was the false count everywhere. I just I'm not a fan of like hardcore rules. Um, I feel I felt like the '90s kind of killed hardcore for me. Uh, nobody did it like ECW. So uh, the no DQs. I mean, there's a place for it, but uh, with this match, I, I I feel like it was it was worth it. Um, there was some blood. Uh, another thing I just can't stand is. Back then when Shawn Michaels did a super kick, it was his finisher. And sometimes he would have to do it two or three times depending on who he was wrestling. But it seems like now everybody does a super kick. And knowing how to kick, it is the sloppiest kick I've ever seen. And I just, I'm not a fan of the super kicks. And I just kind of wish wrestlers would kind of pull back on super kicks. Because um, it seems like everybody does it. And I, I kind of popped a little bit when Luchasaurus just wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't sell the super kick. So I'm like, yes, you know, you got a mask on, so you shouldn't be able to sell it. Um, there was a really good Hurricane uh, Rana to, to the table. I really enjoyed that. Um, one thing that kind of put me down on it was the thumbtacks. Um, I, I feel like, you know, uh, with, with trash cans, ladders, uh, tables, you know, everybody kind of expects craziness with that, but when you start introducing other weapons, uh, I, I just care about, you know, I have so many wrestling fan, uh, friends, you know, and I always care about their longevity. And 
I get scared with stuff like this because I'm like, I, I just, I don't want to see my, my buddies like hurting down, down when they're, you know, in their 50s and 60s. And uh, thumbtacks, you know, they might seem inconspicuous, but then you get, you get one in the forehead and it's just, it's kind of nasty. Um, there was some really nasty bumps. I, I think Adam Cole was the one that like, oh, I was just, I, I winced, you know. There was some good back and forth. Um, Luchasaurus, oh man, he's just so underrated. And I feel like if, not necessarily repackage him, but um, maybe if he went down more of a serious route as a singles wrestler and kind of um, not really got away from, from Jungle Boy, but maybe did his own thing, I think it would really benefit him. Uh, I originally was giving this match three karate chops, but I upped it to four just because Luchasaurus just made this match for me. Uh, the winners were Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, which uh, 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 Christian Cage was part of the team too, but you wouldn't have known that because he was barely in the match. Like he, there was a couple spots where he came in, but you know the the main the main guys that it was focusing on was Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Um, the next match, uh, man. This was this had to be my biggest letdown of the night because uh, I know you guys know I'm a huge Malachi Black fan. I mean, even when he was in NXT, WWE, just like I always felt like he was so underappreciated in WWE, and now I feel like he's starting to drop down in the card in uh, in AEW, and I don't want that to happen. And I hope it's not because of Cody Rhodes, but this one was Pack and Cody versus uh, Malachi Black and Andrade. This is match number five. Malachi entrance never gets old. <laughs> I can always watch it, and his new mask looks amazing. Uh, it was kind of funny how Cody got booed right when his music started, and it, it was just, uh, you know, he's not the heel of the match, but it, it felt that way. And I mean, I feel bad for Cody because he's trying his best to be a face, and he even gave, like, a uh, disabled fan his belt. Which, you know, those things are cool, but it's like, you know, if if you're already a heel in people's eyes, just roll with it. Um, other than that, the match starts off pretty good. Um, there was a lot of... I, I'm huge on storytelling, so just the, pack, the fact that Pac and Cody kind of were at odds with each other right off the bat um, was really good. Um, Malachi and Andrade worked well together in the beginning of the match, but then they slowly started deteriorating. Um, it was just a weird tag team, and I kind of wish it was more of Malachi Black versus Cody Rhodes just to finish off that feud so Malachi can go off and then Cody can become a heel. But I, I felt like this is kind of like lingering that story a little bit. And uh, one thing that I really did not like about TNA especially near near when it started really getting uh, kind of stale was these storylines that just kept going and going and going and then they would evolve, but it would still be the same storyline. I feel like storylines should go three matches and then reset and, you know, give another wrestler a chance, um, especially with AEW, having the wrestlers being able to go to other promotions. They have that chance to kind of leave for a little bit and kind of push somebody else, but it seems like it's just the same cycle over and over, especially like Super Click. Uh, but it was a good explosive match. Uh, I don't know. I, I The match ended so abruptly that it was just such a letdown. Uh, Pac and Cody won. Um, I, I, I give it a soft three karate chops just because... These four guys are such great wrestlers, and I didn't want to take away from that, but it's just the match was such a letdown. I, I just, it was one of those matches that could have been left off the card, and it would have been much better for that. It was just too much wrestling for the night. It was almost four hours plus the buy-in, so that's, uh, I would say, about four and a half hours of actual wrestling. So if I was a, a fan and actually paid to go watch this show, this probably would have been my bathroom break. You know, it's... uh. And I hate saying that because I love I love Malachi Black, um, I, Andrade is um, I'm just I'm lukewarm on, and Cody I think would be an amazing heel, and they're just wasting him as a face. Um, the next match uh, is 
match number six is Britt Baker versus K Tay Conti. I always want to say K Tanti. <laughs> um, it uh, I don't know the. You could tell the hype wasn't really there for this. Uh, Britt always gets a good pop. Uh, I always love Britt Baker. Um, but when Conti came out, it was just like the crowd was just not into it. And uh, I just have a gripe when wrestlers just always kind of focus on, you know, instead of focusing on how good of a wrestler they are, it's always about, oh, what country are you from, you know? Uh, and it, it's just, uh, I don't know, it gets kind of jingoistic for me. But... I was really hoping uh, Conti would win just because I'm a martial artist, so I always kind of lean towards the martial artist, and I feel like martial artists have never really gotten the real big push in wrestling, um, you know, with regards to some, but uh, I don't know. It was the weakest match for sure. It, it was another match that just could have been left on the card. I think Britt Baker could have defended this title on AEW television. There was a nasty spot on the outside for Conti. A lot of bad bumps, and it was just really sloppy. Um, Baker wins with a dirty stomp. It was an okay finish. I gave it two and a half karate chops just because um, it was the only women's um, match of the night. So I was. I get bummed out because WWE did a really good job of pushing the women's division. Uh, two or three years ago and it feels like now it's just an afterthought and AEW has never really been the women's wrestling that I was hoping it would be um, so I gave it two and a half star uh, two and a half karate chops rather because of it being the only women's match all right match number seven it was uh, Eddie Kingston versus CM Punk now, this match, for me, could have been either the match of the night or it could have just been left off of pay-per-view. Um, one sentiment that I feel that Jim Cornette has a lot of uh, value in what he's saying is CM Punk has been wasted. Um, and I've, I've seen it, you know, I've seen it a lot. There was so much hype for CM Punk to come to AEW. And I, I really wanted him to be like, kind of like the, the poster child for AEW. But I feel like Malachi Black should be that. But even with um, Malachi just not being pushed um, the way that I would have hoped, uh, CM Punk at least is kind of helping elevate some of these um, mid-card wrestlers that probably wouldn't have gotten the chance or the eyeballs thanks to it. CM Punk coming, so it's kind of like a double-edged sword. I understand where Punk is coming from, where he kind of wants to get the ring rust out, but uh, I feel like it, it, he's kind of been wasted. Um, there was a nice brawl at the beginning. Um, I always like these kind of like straight-up Arn Anderson type, uh, old-school Arn Anderson type wrestling matches where it's just brawling out and even Dustin Rhodes, uh, old WCW style. Um Punk looks good. I mean, for for the fact that he's been gone for so long, it's just it's always fun to watch him. He's got some good uh, storytelling. I I felt weird because the crowd was, seemed like it was turning on Punk. Uh, you know, you still got the CM Punk chance, but there was so many Eddie chants, um, and uh, you know, I, I I feel like he's he's a good wrestler and I'm not taking anything from him. But I was just shocked to see that. The crowd was behind him. And I, I like the story where, you know, CM Punk's kind of like this straight edge guy. And Eddie's got demons. So it's it's a good good clash. clash. I really liked it. Um, I don't know. It looked uh, like Punk got a really good cut. So there was some color. Um, I gave Punk uh, and Eddie Kingston two and a half karate chops. Um, Punk won. It was kind of predictable, you know, they're not going to have Punk lose, especially on a big pay-per-view like this, um, especially when there's really nothing at stake. I mean, if this was Punk for a title or, you know, uh, Punk had the title or something like that, I could see that there could possibly change hands, but it just being one of these matches, I, I, don't, I really didn't see them kind of making Punk lose this one. Um, match number eight, 
is the Inner Circle versus American Top Team. This was the other way around. This was the one match I just was not looking forward to, but this was actually the most fun. I'm still not all about these uh, <laughs> um, lazy, lazy booked matches where it's just all out pandemonium. Um, but there was some really shining spots in this. Um, Guarada is, he's just a, a great, great uh, prospect. Like, I just, I know he's been wrestling a while, but it's like, it's nice that now they're pushing him to the moon and I'm just excited to see what he comes up with next. And I saw on Twitter, some people were showing, <laughs> he's like the new Jeff Hardy uh, with some of his spots and there was some really good spots. Um, it kind of started off confusing because it, it was called the Minneapolis street fight, but then it started off with tags and I was like, I was looking at my brother and I was just like, shouldn't this have just been a tornado, uh, tag match? And I was just shocked that it just started off as a regular tag match. Um, but then it just devolved into chaos. People were, ch uh, pinning each other wherever. Um, it was just a little bit crazy. Um, you could tell when people were supposed to kind of wait on the side because there was a couple times where uh, uh, some of the inner circle was just disappearing. Um, Santana looked great. Um, I was kind of bummed out that Dan Lambert was there. Um, this is like a mini side gripe. I love MMA. I love wrestling. But they should stay entirely separate entities. Uh, this... <clears throat> This uh, mixture where every wrestler wants to be an MMA fighter and every MMA fighter wants to show up in wrestling to get a quick paycheck, uh, I'm not about that. Just, if you want to be a wrestler with a martial arts gimmick, that's fine. But when you bring in the MMA aspect of it, it just, uh, you, you lose me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, opening up... Uh, DC comic book, but then you see Batman drawn like Vegeta in Dragon Ball. I love anime, I love comics, but I don't, you know, when I'm reading a comic, I want to read a comic book. When I read a manga, I want to read a manga. And uh, maybe it's just that distinction that, that bothers me, but I don't know if any of you have that same problem. If you do, just leave it in the comments. Uh, I, I always love having this discussion because a lot of people think because I, I like martial arts, I like MMA that I want to see it in wrestling, but I don't. The Ronda Rousey exper uh, experiment in WWE was lame. Uh, Dos Santos here was just, oh, it was just, he, he did a, did some pretty cool, like, moonsaults, but I'm like, dude, you're going to break your neck. And um, like Jake Hager, his MMA career was really good, but then he came back to wrestling. I, I just, I don't know. It just to me the they should just stay entirely separate. It's okay if you come back to wrestling and mention those accolades, but I don't know. Man, I'd love to hear what everybody else has to say. Um, it was uh, some of the funnier spots was uh, uh, Jericho kind of hiding. I kept telling my my brother and my daughter, I'm like, hey, look, Jericho, he's back there like the groundhog. Um, I don't know. I love Jericho. Um, in the middle, it kind of got into like a comedy match, especially with uh, Dan Lambert there. Uh, Dan Lambert's great on the mic, but just keep him out of the wrestling matches. Um, uh, other than that, I really it it was it was a good match. I, I gave it a th three karate chops, and that that was mostly Gara Gara is I probably butchered his name. It's sad because I'm Hispanic, so. Um, I gave it three karate chops, uh, inner circle one. Um, and uh, before we go to the last match, which is Kenny Omega versus Hangman, uh, Jay Lethal comes back, uh, or not comes back, but shows up. And I think that's because Ring of Honor, um, AEW kind of bought out some uh, Ring of Honor contracts. Um, this is another problem I have with Twitter. Um, it's just the dirt sheets and stuff is like you find out about stuff before it happens So it's not that big of a shock when it happens on TV. Uh, I kind of miss That's what I do miss about the 90s is it was really hard to get Background information about wrestling, but now you can't even go on YouTube without seeing oh this wrestler just got let go This wrestler just got signed 
it kind of takes the power away from the promotions being able to shock people and excite people. So um, I, I kind of already knew Lethal was coming. I was hoping that there would be a better shock of the night. But um, so far, I felt like the pay-per-view was well worth the price. Um, uh, like I said before, there were some matches that could have been cut. I think Britt Baker shouldn't have been cut just because it's the women's match. But... Uh, I think Danielson and Miro could have been left for AEW television because it, it kind of gets people excited to see the, the, the end of the tournament on TV. And then whoever won, leave that for a pay-per-view. But um, other than that, the, the, the pay-per-view has been really good, well worth the money, well worth a way to spend your Saturday night, especially if you're like me. I don't drink. I really don't really go out. So it was a lot of fun, and it was wrestling. From top to bottom, there was wrestling. It's not like WWE where there's just like uh, sprinkles of dumb promos and comedy spots. You know, this was just wrestling all the way through with some comedy sprinkled through it. But it was wrestling. Um, but on to the main event. Now, this one had me kind of uh, shocked because I've always liked Kenny Omega, but I always thought he was better as a face uh, this heel, Kenny Omega, just, I don't know, I, I just really think he has so much talent and it's wasting it as this Hollywood Hulk Hogan ripoff. Um, but this match was just stellar. Uh, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page, there were some good intros. Uh, Omega had a mixed crowd reaction, which was shocking, but he is he is a heel. There's this really good back and forth. Um... So there were some really stiff shots uh, between the two, and I don't know if it's because they're friends in real life, but they really know how to sell these these hits. Um, Paige had some really good counters against Omega. Um, more outside ring action. I, I just get so tired of it. Um, another gripe I have with wrestling, and this is every wrestling promotion is when everyone looks at the hard camera, the one that's always positioned at the ring, and they just stare at it. And this is not a JoJo's anime. Like, there shouldn't be any, like, I get posing when you come in as an entrance, but why are you doing it in the middle of a match? Um, that's just a gripe I have, and kind of a side rant. Um, there's some, the great power bomb from the top rope, um, it looked a little bit like it, it might have been botched, and there were so many times where I'd always turn to my wife or my brother, and I'm like, oh, that's this is going to be on Botchamania. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously when, they're, when you're working at the level that these two guys are working at, uh, you know, the, the stamina, you know, just I just remember from being in two-minute sparring matches in, in karate, by that last fifty minute, last uh, fifteen minutes, you're, or fifteen seconds, you're gassed. You can't. after Lance Archer's uh, uh, about two weeks ago, I was kind of shocked that they're, you know, when I see these these high spots, I, I get worried. You know, just like I said earlier, just the longevity of these guys. You know, I want these guys to be around for a while. So, um. The, the late offense between the two, it kind of woke the match back up because the match kind of started teetering off. But obviously that's mostly because of their stamina. Um, <laughs> Shivani just with his uh, with his comments were great. Um, then the Bucks start coming out near the end. I was kind of like, oh no, here we go. But they didn't interfere. Uh, Hangman went to one side of the rope, went in, got some offense. Then went to the other side of the rope, and I think it was Matt just staring at him. He kind of gives him the okay to finish off Omega. I thought that was really cool. I'm all about the storytelling in the ring. I could care less about promos, but when you tell a story in the ring, that is amazing. And it's very reminiscent of New Japan, where there's just so much storytelling in the match. Um, I was just completely shocked that the title changed. Uh, Hangman won. Um, that was like my biggest shock because I thought they were building up the Daniel Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson, whichever way you want to say it. I thought they were building that up 
to have Omega and him at the next pay-per-view. Now that's kind of out of the picture because Brian got the number one contendership and now uh, Hangman has the title. But I did feel like they're sprinkling seeds of a heel turn for Hangman or a face turn for the Bucks or a face turn for Omega. Who knows? Um, I feel like Omega's just too damn good to be wasting as, like I said, a Hollywood Hulk Hogan ripoff. Um, I gave this match five karate chops, and I hate to sound <laughs> like uh, like the good old uncle out there who loves to give five stars to Omega matches, but this one was just good from start to finish. It, it was a roller coaster, and you can't ask much, much more for a wrestling match than a roller coaster. Um, and it was just one of those really great matches, and... Uh, I would put it up there with Match of the Night with FTR and the Lucha Bros. Uh, which is funny because the All Out pay-per-view, the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks were like the top top tier of of that pay-per-view. So it's funny how the Lucha Bros just kind of swept it up again. But uh, Omega and Hangman, low expectations. And I was completely blown away. AEW is just on a roll with their pay-per-views. So, it, I, I wanted to be fair, so I aggregated the scores and with all the karate chops. And it came out to a 3.27 average for the pay-per-view. And that's between all the matches. I didn't add the Jay Lethal stuff because it wasn't a match. So, I didn't feel that was fair. Um, but, really great start to finish. I cannot wait for the next pay-per-view and... Uh, I really hope that the next pay-per-view, they kind of either cut back on unnecessary matches and keep it at a, a, a nice, tight show. Um, or if you're going to do a card this big, maybe move some of them to the buy-in so that the people on YouTube can enjoy a little bit more. Um, just little things like that, but I am, uh, I'm really excited to see the future of AEW um, and... Uh, you know, a lot of people like to throw comparisons about WCW, uh, but I feel like this is a much better product than WCW was in this time frame for them. And I'm talking about their rebrand. So when WCW became the Bischoff era, their bright spots were always the cruiserweights and some of the mid-card wrestlers. The antics of the top card, it kind of diminished the product. Whereas this one... The only ones that could use some work are the top cards, but they're still putting out stellar matches. It's not like, you know, the finger poke of death or, you know, boring Goldberg and Hogan matches. These are top tier matches. And it's just, um, I'm really excited to see the future of this company. And uh, one day I hope to actually go see it live. I missed out on the Brody Lee uh, tribute show here in Rochester, so I'm, I'm hoping that they come back again. Um, but other than that, great pay-per-view, 3.27 average. Um, that's from all the karate chops. And I highly recommend if you want to get the... See it, like, uh, I think... I don't know if Bleacher lets you, like, order the old pay-per-view. Um, but Fight TV, if you're international, I know I got a lot of people who watch this outside of the U.S., um, but here it was Bleacher Report, or if you have a cable provider, I think you can just do it through regular pay-per-view. I don't have cable anymore. I don't pay for that crap. <laughs> so I, I went straight through Bleacher Report. It was pretty seamless. Uh, it was $50, which I haven't paid that much for a pay-per-view in probably a decade. So that just shows you how much I, I'm, I'm invested back into wrestling. Um, I felt like WWE would sprinkle little things to make me excited about wrestling again, and then they would completely just stomp on it. And AEW has reignited my passion for pro wrestling, and I can't wait for the future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the drawing in this video. Um, and uh, see you in the next time. Take care.